Hey everybody, how you doing? It's Patrick from Vicious Computers and welcome to a brand new tutorial video. Now tonight, this is gonna be a follow-up video to something that I recorded a few nights ago. And that was a video where I demonstrated the new features for Windows 10 called WSL2. That is uh, the Linux subsystems for Windows version two just came out. And this video is tacking onto that because this is gonna show you one of the really cool things that you can use that for that we didn't have the ability to do before. So either you're here just because you follow the channel and you're a subscriber, or you are Googling for a tutorial for PyShrink and you found my video. Now I was looking at PyShrink tutorials a couple of weeks ago because I was actually gonna be setting up a Raspberry Pi retro gaming system for a friend to come over. We we're gonna have some nostalgia and play some old school games. And I had this 250 gigabyte image and I bought a 256 gigabyte micro SD card and it didn't fit. And the reason it didn't fit is because when these images are made, they use every single free byte of space on the card. They mirror it exactly. And if you don't have the exact same card with the exact same number of bytes that that original person created the image with, then it might not fit. And that's the issue I had. And the number one way to fix that, besides going and buying a different card or a bigger card and wasting space, is to shrink it down by getting rid of that free space. Pi shrink does that. But if you look at the tutorials, like I was looking at this one here, they were long-winded. They had you doing a whole bunch of crazy stuff like setting up VirtualBox and installing Virtual Clone Drive and installing Linux and just step after step after step to do something that can be done so much more simple now. So we're taking advantage of technology in 2020 and we're going to be doing this from our Windows machine without any of the hassles. So prerequisites, let me link somewhere on the video. There should be a card that pops up that says, Link to this video, WSL2. That's the guide, basically, that you're gonna to have to follow before you start this, which is installing WSL2 on your Windows 10 machine, and that gives you the ability to run Linux. And now what we're gonna pick up in this video is kind of the more specific things and kind of the, some of the catch-22s about running PyShrink under Windows. So, all right, we're assuming you're coming back to the video, you got WSL2 installed. Let's go over a couple of things. One. Uh, the Windows Store actually has home of, let's open up the Windows Store. So this is, after you've installed WSL2, if you go to the Windows Store for Windows 10 and type in Linux, this is where you're going to find all of your Linux distributions. I am using Ubuntu, which if you click on it for more information, you'll see that it's currently at the time of making this video based on Ubuntu 20.04. So I just installed that and now it's part of my system. The other thing, I shouldn't have closed it just yet, uh, store, load, load, load. Um, the other thing that's in here that I like a lot, I started using, if you search for terminal, all right, so it's the, uh, I'm using both the remote terminal and the Windows terminal. Uh, this is kind of, I'm starting to try using this out instead of PuTTY, and it's kind of nice so far because it can save your passwords and encrypt them and all that stuff. And the Windows Terminal, that's what we're going to open up now. So it's like a command prompt, but it, you can choose what it default opens to, so PowerShell in my case, which is what it comes with. But the other cool thing is once you've installed these Linux distributions, you can just drop down and it'll have them in here for you. So I can launch right into my Ubuntu instance just from opening a new tab. So it's multi-tabs, which is nice. So it's a pretty cool little thing. I thought I'd mention it to you. So we've got a WSL2 installed. Let's run a few commands real quick. With WSL, if you type lists, you'll be able to see what's installed. So I have a bunch to install. If you add verbose on there, which you need to spell correctly, you'll be able to see the state and the version now you need to make sure that version two is what it says. That's WSL2, which is the true Linux kernel versus WSL1, which was kind of like emulation through like trans transmission of you know, different things. So the way you want to set this up, you can say WSL set default version two, and that will set all of your stuff from WSL to version two as the default or you can actually specifically say, change the version of just a specific name, uh, named instance by saying WSL set version 
and then the name, and then the version number. So once you've got that set, you're ready to move into the next part, which is actually getting pie shrink. Now getting pie shrink is pretty simple. We'll just go to our friend Google and let's go type in pie shrink. And you're gonna be looking for the GitHub page. And when you go to download, download the zip, extract it, and you're going to end up finding pyshrink.sh. Now that's the actual script that we want, and that's the only thing we actually need. So once you have all of that set up, you're ready to proceed. Uh, let's give an example of something that's been I've used it for. So this RetroPie image, I shrank it down from 250 to like 230 gigabytes. It fit on my SD card now that RetroPie system is up and running. The other thing, I was making a, a Dyna frame. I'll do another video on that coming soon for my mom. And I created an image of it using my SD card. And it's a 32 gigabyte SD card. So it's taking up 32 gigabytes of space on my computer. I shrank it down. And after I shrank it down, it's only like eight gigabytes. So the exact same data taking up way less space. So it's just really cool to have that ability. So let's uh, talk about some of the cool things that we can do now. So we have pyshrink.sh. I threw it in a folder at the root of one of my drives. We know that we can launch our instance from here. Also, you can just type from a command prompt or a PowerShell. You can type in the name of it, and that will also work. If you CD to your root directory, and now you see we're at the root directory of Ubuntu, and you type in explore.exe space period, this will open up an Internet Explorer window at the root of your Linux distribution. This means that you can move files to and from your Windows machine to your Linux machine right here without doing anything crazy or anything special. The other way you can get to this is open up a Explorer window and type in backslash backslash WSL dollar sign. And this will take you to a hidden network share where all of your distributions will be available. And then you can browse to them that way as well. So that means you have the ability to go from your Windows machine into your Linux machine so that if you needed to move, say, this script into your Linux machine and one of the directories in there, you can do that. However, the way that I prefer to do it is the opposite. If we look at our root directory, you can see that we have our mount points. So, and if you look at those, you can see that it was nice enough to already mount all of my drive letters for my Windows machine inside of Linux. So we can actually go to the F drive and go to that pie shrink folder. So CD, F drive, and then pie shrink. And now you can see all my files that I have on Windows. All these files are in here. And since we're now in Linux, running a true Linux kernel, we can simply execute PyShrink. And the command to do that would be period forward slash, and then the PyShrink script, and then the name of the file, and then press enter. And that's it. It'll start running. That's how easy it is. Like the script is super simple. But getting up to the point where you can run the script, that's the complicated part. And that's where all of the runaround that I saw in the other tutorials can now be avoided. And not only are you going to be able to use PyShrink for anything you need very easily from here forward, you have the full Linux distribution available for all the other things. There's so many cool things you can do on Linux and programs that are on Linux that we don't have in Windows, especially when it comes to open source and other kind of things. And also now, if you're just trying to learn Linux, this is a really good way to get to learn Linux. And I love the fact that the Windows system and the Linux system are sharing the same file system, the same storage, which means I can move files back and forth between them. You know, so if I wanted to say uh, sudo touch and Linux file dot text, Now, if I go back to Windows, there's that file we just created. You know, it's really cool. So, and then if we wanted to edit it, we can edit it from Windows using Notepad or something. 
And then if we want to go edit it from Linux, we can do the same thing. And open it back up. So you can see a lot of powerful things you can do. So um, yeah, again, you'll have to go to the video description or find that video card earlier in the video to find the WSL tutorial, get that WSL2 installed. For that, you're going to need Windows 10 and you have to have Windows 10 updated all the way to the May release of 2020. If you take your command prompt and you go type in WinVer, this will let you see your Windows version. You should be on version 2004, build 19.041 or newer. And also, if you're having trouble getting your Windows system to update to the newest version, go back to Google and type in Windows Media Creation Tool. And then from the Microsoft page, either download the Update Now link or download the Installation Media Creation Tool and build yourself the ISO and manually update your operating system to the new version. This is what I always do because Windows updates tend to sometimes lag behind and they don't want to update to the newest version. So this always will get me to the newest version on demand whenever I want. So this is the easiest way to get yourself up to date. So other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. If you have any questions or comments, just put them down below and I'll try to answer them. I keep track of all those questions and of course, if you guys have any other videos related to this that you'd like to see, let me know because I'm getting back into Linux again. So I'm definitely enjoying the Linux capabilities that we've just recently added. And having PyShrink available on my computer is a nice feature. So this was Patrick from Vicious Computers. I hope everyone enjoyed the video and uh, I'll see you next time.